The following public affairs presentation is produced exclusively for the Cox Channel. And now, The Verdict. Good morning, Kent Myers for The Verdict. Uh, Mick Cornett's not here today, as I say almost every week in, the, in recent weeks, but I do promise you he will be back. Uh, we are just really excited today to have uh, one of our very favorite guests, uh, John Coyle, a criminal defense lawyer here in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, John was one of our two very first guests over five and a half years ago on this show. And he's going to be coming back today to talk about a case that you know something about, you've heard about it. Duke University lacrosse team gets in trouble uh, with a young woman and gets three uh, members, at least so far, get charged with uh, rape or other sexual type offenses. And what we're going to talk to John about today in relation to that case, or using that case as a springboard, is what kind of effect does this kind of an activity have on a person's life, both in the near term and the long term. You'll be interested to hear what John has to say. Uh, so in just a couple of minutes, we'll be back with John Coyle talking about the Duke University lacrosse case. You're watching The Verdict. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. save with Cox Digital Telephone? Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is, there's no surprise at all. Stuck in a rut? Move your career onto the fast track in one of the most exciting segments of the high-tech industry. The Cox Communications National Wireless Call Center for Excellence is hiring employees in Oklahoma City to specialize in wireless customer care. Management opportunities are available for people with substantial experience in the wireless industry. If you're ready to take your career to the next level, submit your resume online at www.cox.com and become a part of the Cox tradition of excellence. We're back with the verdict, uh, Kent Myers, and uh, we're pleased today to have John Coyle, criminal defense lawyer in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma County, the state, uh, all over, wherever he is needed is where he goes. Uh, John was uh, one of two guests on our very first show. Uh, on the question, I believe, is uh, we ask you was, should we retry Terry Nichols? Well, of course, we now know the answer to all of that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I don't want to say who was right between uh, you and your adversary, but uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, John is an is a OCU undergraduate and OCU law graduate, over 30 years of criminal defense experience. He was named Oklahoma's outstanding criminal defense lawyer a couple of years ago. He's been a legal analyst for ABC News and a number of uh, local affiliate stations. He's listed in Best Lawyers in America in the criminal defense area. Uh, this is his fourth visit to the verdict. John, welcome. Thank you very much. Glad Ken. to have you back. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'd like to know the answer, and I bet our viewers would as well. How did you get attracted to the criminal uh, practice? 
Well, I got a job. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> way to answer that. I got the opportunity to work for Bill Barry, who at the time was a prior county attorney and was a successful criminal lawyer. And um, he offered me a job, and that was important uh, in those days when I was first a lawyer, just to get a job. And uh, I enjoyed it very much. And I stayed with him a couple of years and then went out more or less on my own and have had my own firm since that time. Well, you've been, I guess, over 30 years doing this. Yes, sir. 32 uh, years. 32 now. years. Uh, I know because of uh, running into you in the same arena from time to time that you also have taught criminal law to new graduates graduating from law schools and getting ready to take the bar exam. You did that for many years, did you not? Yes, I, re I really enjoyed that because it made me keep up with all the new things they had learned in law school. And so for 10 years I knew all the new cases and what had happened. And now I kind of keep up with them as all lawyers do as we need them in our cases. Well, I will just say this, and I'm not saying it because you're on the show, but there are some lawyers in the criminal area that have thought that just shoot from the hip and others know what the law is and apply the law to their client's case and usually give a better result. And you're in that latter category. Well, thank you. I'm fortunate. I enjoy the law. So enjoying the law makes it easy to, easy to keep up with it. Now, by virtue of what you do, your clientele is different than many lawyers' clientele in that you're dealing with people, your clients or people who are, are charged with crimes, may or may not have done them, but are charged. Uh, and I suspect some of them have been kind of rough around the edges at a, at a minimum. Do you ever feel uncomfortable for your own safety uh, from your uh, clients or former clients? No, you would think, <clears throat> and the common perception is that some of them are rough around the edges. They're really not as bad as divorce clients, for instance, who are angry at each other, and, emo and emotion overcomes all judgment. Almost all of my clients are glad to get the help. And uh, um, I, I think if someone is going to do something, that it might just happen, and it's fate. And there's nothing really you can do. I mean, I'm careful with where I go and the different places I am. But other than that, there's really not much you can do. You haven't had any close calls? No, I've had, I've had threats before. Yeah. Uh, but people who threaten you usually are cowards. And uh, they're not, I don't pay much attention to them. Um, in any event, I've got my work to do and I do my work and go on. Let me ask you this, this is something that um, you and I have talked about before, but I think it's one of the things that you hear most, even in law school classes when you're dealing with professional responsibility and like, and that is, how can a lawyer represent someone that they know is guilty? What do you well, think about Well, I get that? that question a lot, I bet obviously. You do. And uh, you know, the Constitution gives every citizen the right to have a defense. And the most important right is to have the government prove the allegations against the citizen beyond a reasonable doubt. And that was one of the reasons why America started. It's not up to the king or the president or the governor or anyone to say somebody committed a crime. The government has to prove it in front of 12 citizens from all walks of life. It's the most unique system in the world, and it's far from perfect, but it's probably the best one we have. And every citizen is entitled to have the government, to make the government prove the charges against them. And oftentimes they can't. What do you do when a, when a person walks in to your office, a hypothetical client, uh, do you ask them right off the bat, did you do this or not, or do you, I've heard some lawyers say they don't want to know whether their client did it or not. Well, How do you handle it? I really don't care if they did it or not. I mean, it's not important in my analysis of whether or not I'm going to defend it. In The Fugitive, Tommy Lee Jones is told by Harrison, Harrison Ford says, I didn't do it, I'm innocent, and Tommy Lee Jones says, I don't care. Yeah, well, a lot of the time you don't, yeah. and, and it's just one of those things where I've been in the business of defending people all my life, and I defend them. I'm not a judge. I'm not a guidance counselor. I'm a criminal lawyer. And I defend people who get in trouble, and that's just that, just that simple. When they come to see me, they're in trouble. And a lot of times, whether they did it or not, it doesn't make any difference on how I approach the defense. It's what the government can prove. What the government can prove is the thing that's important. 
not what the person did. What are the toughest kinds of criminal cases to, uh, to defend? Are there types or are there circumstances that are tougher than others? Well, all cases are difficult to, to defend where there is a victim involved. A sex crime or a murder, the family of the people. I'm, I'm defending a murder case now uh, in Watonga. That's a very difficult case where there's little question about the guilt of my client and the, the impact on a lot of nice people uh, is very difficult to deal with that and to be in the middle of that. And a lot of the times when those cases first begin, I'm perceived as um, they all kind of look at me with these looks of dislike. And then as we get into the thing, they know that I'm, that I'm trying to safeguard the rights of that person that's accused and don't have any ax to grind with them. There's a general <clears throat> perception that many criminal cases plead out and never are tried. Uh, in your experience, uh, about what percent of the, of the cases that you take on originally actually go to trial? Oh, I'd say about <clears throat> 25% of them go to trial, or 20% of them. A lot of them plead out for a variety of reasons because um, we're able to make a real good bargain sometimes that the reward well outweighs the risk that the person runs. And today with a lot of mandatory sentences and other things, and the new 85% mandatory in Oklahoma, if you're given an opportunity to plead to something that doesn't carry the 85%, then a lot of times it's not worth the risk. And that's why you see less jury trials today, is because the risk is greater than it used to be. John, I got to interrupt and get us to a break. Uh, we're visiting with uh, John Coyle, criminal defense lawyer uh, out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma County. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 2-3 child. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Just keep it. Thank you. Dr. Kessler? What's up with the pizzas? Well, I just got my first satellite bill and those extra fees were a bit of a shocker. So I had to take a second job. Hey, this was supposed to be pepperoni, Dillweed. Hey, it's Dr. Dillweed to you. Whatever. Kids. <laughs> It's cool, eh? you know, I'm a people person. Don't live in satellite denial. Get all your entertainment without the hidden charges from Cox, your friend in the digital age. Ed is through. There you go. Cox Communications está buscando empleados entusiásticos y motivados. Disfruta de nuestros beneficios, pago competitivo, grandes ventajas y oportunidades para el adelante. Si desea hacer una diferencia, Tenemos un lugar para usted aquí con Cox Communications. Visítanos en el internet o llame para ver qué oportunidades tenemos para usted aquí en Cox. Eres tú. Cox Communications está orgulloso de ofrecer igualdad de empleos.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers with John Coyle talking about a number of issues in relation to uh, the criminal practice. And we, uh, we build this show uh, uh, at least with the title of the Duke uh, lacrosse case, and I do want to get to that now. A highly publicized case, John, where uh, three uh, or perhaps more a Duke uh, lacrosse player has been charged with uh, sexual misconduct with a female and uh, some kind of a party. Uh, what are your general impressions about that? Well, it's a serious case. There are a lot of racial overtones involved in it, which is unfortunate because apparently the young lady uh, was black and the boys on the Duke lacrosse team are white. And um, it has those kinds of overtones. The boys are apparently from well-to-do families. Um, so it's attracted a lot more media attention than most cases. And I don't think the universities handled it very well from their, their con immediate condemnation of the players who are obviously entitled to the presumption of innocence. What about the defense lawyers uh, bringing up the uh, DNA evidence or lack of connection there with uh, in the press? Well, this is one of those cases that gets tried in the press. Some of them don't. And as soon as this case started, they had lawyers involved in it who tried the case to the press. One of the boys has passed a polygraph test. The last one, who was the senior captain of the, of the, of the team, Evans, I believe is his name. He's been cleared by a polygraph test. Um, there have been a number of other problems with the evidence. Apparently, the girl's story changed a number of times. And the lawyers are pointing that out. But the district attorney has used this more or less as a springboard to his reelection. And so while that's going on, uh, it's proper to try to counter it. You've got to. Let's, let's take the situation in your practice without any particular case in mind uh, that let's say the appropriate or the uh, relevant prosecutor goes to the press, big splash about the filing of the case, arresting of your client and the like. Do you feel an obligation to respond in that regard? Well, I think you have to take the positive points of your case and you've got to make them known. And they, there's usually an opportunity to do that in the context of the press that's surrounding those. There's a lot of media surrounding those kind of announcements. Yeah. Now, taking the other situation where a prosecutor just doesn't say a word to the press, just files a case, is, is uh, tight-lipped about it, would you uh, take to the media airways on that kind of a case? I don't think so. I, I think it would be unwise to do that uh, because the less media attention you can get to it normally is the best for your client and particularly young people accused in these kinds of sex crimes where oftentimes accusations are made that aren't true. And, and it's very difficult once that bell is rung, once that accusation has been made to try to take that back. It, it affects people for all of their life. Well, I take it you've dealt with literally hundreds if not more clients that have truly been innocent and yet charged. Uh, course. What kind of effect uh, does, does the charging have on the life of the uh, accused, even if he's found, he or she, ultimately innocent? Well, people take it differently, but on almost all of them it's difficult. And it's really difficult on some of them. And it changes their life forever because they are perceived, people only get bits and pieces of information and they make up their mind on what they read or what they see. And the people who, the juries that ultimately decide those cases, they have access to all the information to use in making that decision and people just see bits and pieces of, us, of it. And as ordinary citizens, we can make a decision, oh, I think that guy did it or I think he didn't. But the accusation itself stays with them for all time. And I presume there's an immunity from uh, suit for the prosecutor that makes the accusation. There is an immunity from suit, except in certain rare circumstances where they deliberately falsify yeah. something. If they have an, uh, an actual part in the falsification of some evidence, there might be a lawsuit against them. But just for bringing a charge, even a charge that is baseless, an unfounded charge, they still don't have liability. Uh, the uh, situation I'd like you to talk to us about now is a situation where the client walks into your office 
and says, I did hypothetically embezzle a million dollars from my company, but nobody has discovered it yet. Uh, but they will. We're about to have an audit. It's going to surface, but nobody knows about it. Uh, when do you take a proactive approach and say, well, we got to go see the prosecutor before the prosecutor even knows you've done this to try to work out a deal? Or when do you say, we got to sit back and wait and see what happens? How do you handle those things? Well, of course, every case is different. But in the hypothetical you just gave, <clears throat> the first thing that I'd do is try to contact the person who's the head of that company and say, and, and find out how much of the money is left. In embezzlement cases, I don't care how much money they've taken. They rarely have any money left. Yeah. It's remarkable how quickly <laughs> they can spend embezzled money. And they're always going to pay it back. I mean, there's always an intention to pay it back. It's an interesting psychology. Um, and, I, and I've handled a hundred of those cases over the years. And if they got anything, anything left, then you take it immediately to the company to try to avoid charges in some way to pay it back. And if the charges do come, the fact that you've been in, an active, in, in, in an active way paying it back and being involved in making up for it will always help you. Do you ever go to the prosecutor in advance of a charge being filed and, and talk to them about trying to work something out before the charge is even filed? Oh, often. Often we do. And we do more in federal court than we do in state court. In state court, they get so busy sometimes in the larger counties that they don't have time to talk about cases. They really don't get as involved in the cases. A police officer brings what they call a blue sheet that contains the witnesses and the summary of what happened to a prosecutor. And that's really all the prosecutor sees. Talks to the police officer for a few minutes and then signs off on charges. They don't really know anything about the person or enough about the case, in my judgment, to make the, a, a really fair decision of whether or not they ought to file the charges. But you, in federal court, you have more opportunity to do the advance work. You have a lot more opportunity in advance, and that's why a lot more cases in federal court aren't filed, because you're able to convince them it was less than what they think or for a variety of different things, or it didn't happen the way that it shows. You and I get these bar journals that report cases uh, every week uh, to us, uh, and it reports criminal cases, oftentimes being reversed for prosecution misconduct. Have you run into prosecution misconduct in your practice? Uh, I've run into it, uh, unfortunately, with a greater frequency. The prosecutors tend to overreach. And the only way that a prosecutor can o overreach is if you get a judge that doesn't make them do the right thing. What about and judges that, that overreach? What about judges that are prejudiced or biased against your client? Well, you find those in all courts, yes. but you find them a lot in state court. Um, and particularly, it's politically popular sometimes for the judges, say, to be in favor of a victim, which they're not supposed to because do. Because they have to be run for election. Because they have to run for election. So they're not, as, they're not as even as a judge, say, for instance, in the federal court system. And there's a, there's a recent case where there was even an editorial in the newspaper that it's so sad for the victims of the case of this young girl that was killed. It's a Mitchell case. And the young girl was killed by this man and no real reason at all for it. It was senseless, mm -hmm. um, horrible for her family. But in the first case, it was Joyce Gilchrist was the chemist. She was a cheat and a crook. And so they overturned that conviction. And then it came back for a retrial here in Oklahoma County. And it was tried in front of a judge who had gone to the wedding of the dead girl's brother and knew the family and still stayed on the case, ignored the pleas of the defense to get another judge and a prosecutor who wasn't fair. And that combination, now they're going to go through, have to go through another trial. John, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt, we're out of time. Thank you so much. I want to get you back and we'll take a few of you those bet. issues and look at Thanks, them more Ken. carefully. We've been visiting with John Coyle, we'll be right back. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa. 
where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Your slice of Cardinals heaven can be found on the Cox Channel all season long. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back to the verdict, Kent Myers. Uh, we enjoy always having John Coyle on our show. He's an interesting guest, a good guy, and a very competent criminal defense lawyer. Uh, we'll have him back again with another topic soon. Uh, we'd like to know what you would like to see on The Verdict. Go to our website, theverdict.tv. Let us know what you'd like to see. We pay attention to what you tell us, and uh, we hope that you'll let us know uh, what kind of shows you want to see, any debates you'd like to see. We'll see if we can't uh, accommodate you. On behalf of Mick Cornett, I'm Kent Myers. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. Seating program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.